Hi everybody, Wildside here again. Happy Labor Day. To those of you with jobs, uh, I wish you continued employment. And those of you that are looking for work, I hope that you find it soon enough. Um, me, myself, I have a job and uh, I actually drove into work today not realizing it was Labor Day. My family's been on vacation for about a week now, so I've lost track of time. Didn't realize it was a holiday. Of course, my boss is German, so he doesn't know anything about holidays unless we tell him it's a holiday, so he's probably going to show up. But I'm back home now, and uh, I thought I'd uh, celebrate Labor Day by finishing off this uh, frame that I've got here, but uh, after looking more closely at um, Prussia Jr.'s uh, Element UU um, X sends and Greg Frost's X carriage, I can see what the problem is. Um, there are several actually, so I don't think I'm going to get to this machine today. So instead, I'm going to do a tutorial on one way to wire stepper motors. And I'll address these issues in another video and uh, propose some solutions once I figure out what other options are available out there for mounting X carriages and so forth on linear bearings. Anyway, so on to the stepper motor tutorial. Alright, so the typical stepper motor tutorial, if, I mean the typical stepper motor, if you're not familiar, uh, that we use with rep wraps are bipolar 1.8 degree steppers, NEMA 17 it refers to the size of the motors um, now some motors uh, come with connectors such as this one and the wire lengths may vary mine are kind of short some motors are directly wired where you can't remove the wire from the motor itself this is a little bit handier because you can uh, you know, swap out cables kind of easily. But uh, anyway, the main thing is how do you get from the stepper motor to your ramps or other electronics? And that's what I'm going to try and cover here uh, just briefly by going over the kind of tools that I use and the techniques that I use for creating the splices and so forth. Um, what I like to do is uh, use barrel connectors to make all the splices in my wires. Um, they're actually pretty tiny and the wire that I use and you know I know some people don't like it but I use ribbon cable the same kind you would see in a hard drive. Um, the thing is uh, with the exception of the extruder uh, none of these cables are going to be exposed to too much strain so the likelihood of them breaking is minimal and with the extruder I usually implement some kind of uh, strain relief. Anyway, so I've got my connector here and I've already terminated one half of the barrel connectors and here's the tool or one of the tools that's compatible with those barrel connectors and other crimp on type uh, splicing barrels. Uh, this is a particularly cheap one um, and by cheap I mean it requires excessive amounts of force to actually get your crimp on there. Uh, there are some tools that have a spring return so that they're always in the open position unless you lock them down with their lock and they put quite a bit of force on the on the crimp without you exerting so much force. Anyway, the cheap one is usable. At some point uh, when I'm rich I'm gonna buy a better one but for now this will do. Um, ordinarily I use shrink tubing uh, to cover these barrels. Um, with these small ones usually the uh, 1 16th inch uh, heat shrink will fit over the barrels and uh, keep them from shorting out on each other. But uh, you know I'm known for cutting corners in a good way. Uh, heat shrink is actually quite a bit more expensive than Kapton tape. So what I've resorted to doing lately is uh, using Kapton to finish things off and uh, you know I'm not saying that this is good or bad uh, it's probably bad but uh, so far I've had no problems with it and it's a lot easier to take things apart 
and see the color order of things because you can sort of see through the Kapton tape and it's non-conductive and gives it kind of a stiff uh, hold there that you don't always get with uh, with the shrink tubing so like I said this is only one way to do things um, I'm just demonstrating you can uh, use heat shrink tubing if you like electrical tape whatever so that about covers that part of it. Now I want to have a little bit of, uh, of a talk here on the stepper motors themselves for those of you that may not be as familiar uh, with how these things operate. The bipolar stepper motors uh, have a couple of separate coils inside there um, and you've got permanent magnets connected to the shaft on discs then on the outside you've got your winding uh, and these winding have little teeth that line up with the teeth of the disc inside the motor now they don't precisely line up there's always one set of teeth that is in phase and the others are various degrees out of phase and by controlling the current pulses on the two pairs of wires you can coerce the motor into rotating slowly to line up different phases of that. Uh, Micro-stepping controllers uh, control that to a finer degree uh, so that you can get more than uh, 1.8 degrees uh, per step. Um, now, <clears throat> stepper motor uh, terminology is uh, A plus A minus, B plus B minus, or 1, 2, 3, 4. The thing is you have uh, two pairs and uh, one of the first things you need to do uh, when you've got an, a stepper motor that uh, perhaps you don't have all the specs on, a lot of the stepper motors are um, aftermarket pulls from old copiers and things like that. So even though you have the part number on there, it's not, it's not always possible to get the specs from the manufacturer. Although occasionally they do adhere to a standard uh, wiring color uh, for most of their steppers. However, in this case, you can see that all the wires are purple. So, very difficult to tell just from looking uh, what would be the two pairs of wires. So, the best way to do this, it, which one is A and which one is B, is not as important as isolating them together. What I'll usually do is take the first and second wires, short them together like this and try and turn the motor. There's a difference uh, in how the motor turns when the wires are shorted and when they are not. Uh, you get very little if any resistance when the wires are not shorted. Then when you put them together uh, the motor will give you some significant resistance. So that's how you know that you found one of the pairs. Occasionally you'll get the A and B on the outsides and the a and B negatives on the inside, but in this case we can go left to right, A plus, A minus, B minus, B plus is what I'm assuming. Um, so then I'll just test the other pair. It's also another way to test that one of your coils hasn't uh, been fried in case it is a used motor. So once you've isolated your pairs, uh, then it's just a matter of crimping on the ends for the connectors and I get these from Ultimachine but I'm sure they're available in other places this is a four pin crimp again it's a crimp on type you can also solder these but uh, if you are not highly skilled at soldering you may end up with too much solder on the connector and it won't actually fit into the into the end of the connector or it'll be a very poor fit and may actually push out when you put this on your ramps or other electronics uh, but anyway, so what you want to do is go from left to right, right to left on this connector and put your A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. Um, <clears throat> it's not a one-time deal. If, if you do happen to mess up, uh, you can always pry this tab up slightly uh, with a very fine pointed object. This is a PCB rework tool. Um, but you can lift up the tab and gently pull the wire out 
uh, and try again. Occasionally, uh, what I've found is that if the motor's pairs are correctly detected, but one of the pairs is backwards. So let's say that, uh, for example, with ramps, let me go and grab one. But with ramps, I think the order of the pairs is uh, listed as uh, 1B, 1A, 2A, 2B. So it's not straight uh, left to right, right to left like it is on the motor end. Um, so it seems to indicate that, uh, well, I take that back. Actually, this is probably the shittiest uh, labeling nomenclature that could have been put on here because they're mixing 1, 1, 2, 2, which would imply that it's uh, A minus, A plus, or A plus, A minus, and then B minus, B plus. Or it could be A, B is the order, and 1 is the polarity. So, uh, completely ambiguous here. Um, I'll have to look into that further. That's uh, really poor nomenclature there. They should uh, stick to a more standard naming convention for the stepper motors. Uh, a, A naught would be my preference. Anyway, uh, enough on that little rant. So hopefully that's giving you some understanding of how to get these things hooked up. I apologize for not being able to decipher the uh, ramps connector, but uh, you know, that's a little bit of experimentation that everybody learns from, and I don't have enough brain cells left to recall how I've done it in the past, but I'm sure once I get back on this machine, I'll uh, be able to uh, recall that and I'll update this video. So for now, I hope uh, it helps some of you guys get your machines wired up. Um, I know it can be a big pain uh, getting this done the first time, but uh, you know, that's what we're all here for. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.